So this is a PowerPoint on the graphs of motion. We're going to be dealing with position time graphs and velocity time graphs, and hopefully we will be able to uh, go through this in uh, some detail so that you, have make, you can make sense of the graphs. They will be kind of confusing, so practice, practice, practice. So let's, just, let's begin, and uh, we will have to consider that there's a car that's here in red, and it's moving in a rightward or a positive direction, uh, constant velocity. So if we're going to calculate for the velocity of the car in this diagram below right over here, we can pretty much determine that velocity is equal to 10 meters per second because we are going to take the position that it, for every second that increases, well that changes, the uh, distance increased by a total of 10 meters. So the velocity is distance 10 meters divided by time, one second, or if you want to take the whole thing, 50 meters divided by 50, 5 seconds. So 50 divided by 5 gives me 10 meters per second. Pretty simple. Now if we're going to graph this, we're going to look at the position or the distances that the car have traveled and the time that has passed. So we're going to plot this graph on um, the position on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So hit pause and go ahead and draw a graph using these coordinates. Be sure to label the axis and include the units. So go ahead and hit pause now and work on the graph. So here is the graph. And if you have plot the graph similar to this, drawn as a scale, everything is good, you should look something similar to this. So the y-axis, which is the position or the distance from the origin, you have increments of 10 meters. And then for the x direction, you will have increments of seconds, once per second. And you should have a line that's drawn similar to this. Point of origin is where the car started at the origin at 0 seconds at 0 meters. And the variables are position and time. Okay, so then now I'm going to ask you a few questions. So looking at the same graph, uh, what can you tell me about the slope? Well, of course, by looking at this PowerPoint, you know that the slope is equal to the velocity. Now, first of all, how do we calculate for slope? Now, slope, as we learn in math, is the change in y over the change in x, otherwise known as rise over run. So the slope is rise over run rise being the units of meters, run being the units of seconds, so we have position on the y, the rise, and time as the x, or the run, we have meters over seconds, and what is meters over seconds? What's well, distance over time? And of course, as you know, it is velocity. So the slope of a position time graph gives us a velocity. So this is pretty important because this tells you a velocity. Now looking at uh, the calculations for a position time graph, we're going to take this line and find the slope of this linear graph. 50 and 50 and 0, right? 5 seconds and 0 seconds. So it gives us a 10 meters per second as our slope. But 10 meters per second, as we remember in the two or three slides ago, it's also the velocity. So we can always choose different points along this line, and we can determine that the velocity is 10 meters per second. So that's basically saying that this car is moving at a constant velocity. So whenever there's a constant velocity, you have a straight line. Okay. So what happens if the line is not straight? Well, what, is, what, is, what does this mean? So let's answer the question. What's going on with this graph? We still have a position and time graph. But over here, from the origin, we have a straight line that has a slope. And then we have a, another section of the same graph with it's basically flat and perfectly horizontal. So then the question is, what will happen if I had a horizontal line? What does that mean to an object that is moving? Go ahead and pause and answer that question. Okay, so what about now if you have a vertical line? What does that mean for something that's, you know, moving? Go ahead and pause, jot down the answer, and uh, see if we can address that question in class um, part.
probably Wednesday, huh? How's Wednesday going? So there's that. Okay, so some examples. If you have a graph on the left, okay, in a position in time, this means that it's moving relatively slow compared to the graph with the same uh, incremental change in position. Um, both of these graphs have the same incremental change in the uh, axes. You would see that the left one is slower. It's moving towards the right or the positive direction and the constant velocity. Fast rightward positive constant velocity because it's steeper slope. So if you had uh, any idea of how this whole thing works, you'll have a better understanding of how, like in terms of graphs, you have a better understanding of how um, the motion can be represented by this graph. Another example, this will show a negative velocity because as you, negative, remember, is not going slower, it just means that it is moving in the negative direction. So then if you have a graph moving in a negative direction, that means it's a negative slope. Now you see with the slope here is not very steep. So we can say that the car is moving at a constant speed, but in a negative direction, but not very fast as compared to the right graph. The right graph, you see the slope is much steeper, so therefore we can say that the slope is faster. It's moving towards the left, and since the line is a straight line, it's moving at a constant velocity. So of course, this is all relative to uh, the increments on the position and on increments on the time axis. Okay. Now I'm going to ask a question. Um, what happens if the line, the graph line, dips below the x-axis? What does that mean? So why don't you go ahead and hit pause and see if you can answer that question real quick. If not, remember to ask tomorrow. Now how about this? We got two different graphs, also both as position and time graphs. Now, if you notice, this line is straight. And a straight line means constant velocity. Since the slope on a position time graph means velocity, when we have a straight line, a straight line will indicate a, uh, a line with the same slope, same being the operative word, otherwise known as constant. And it's positive because it's a positive slope. So you've got a positive velocity. It's moving further and further away from the point of origin in the positive direction. Now over here, we have a line that is sloping. Or I shouldn't use sloping. We have a line here that is curved or concave up. Now if you have a line that's concave up and it's not a straight line, therefore we can say that the slope is different. It is changing. And because the slope is changing from kind of a flat-ish slope to a steeper slope, we can say that the velocity is increasing. If the velocity is increasing because it's a continuously more and more positive slope, its velocity is increasing. Therefore, this object is accelerating, making the car go faster and faster. Velocity is positive, And since it is increasing its slope, we can say that the acceleration is also positive. How about this? You notice this one is concave down, concave up. If it's concave down, if you notice on the very top, we take a line tangent to this point right here. A line tangent means it's a line that is drawn uh, across one point on uh, a curve. And so what happens now is that line tangent originally, if we take the slope of the line tangent right over here, notice it's pretty flat, pretty horizontal. But towards the bottom, it's pretty steep. So we can say that the, um, since this line is not a straight line but a curved line, we are going to say that the object is also accelerating. But since this car has an overall negative slope, we know that the velocity, the direction of this car, is moving in a negative direction. And so it is starting off slow, and it goes faster and faster and faster. And because it's moving slower to faster, basically saying slope is increasing, we can say that the velocity is negative, but we can also say that the um, uh, the velocity is increasing, so the acceleration is also a negative acceleration. Negative velocity, negative acceleration, 
basically means that the velocity is increasing. Both velocity and acceleration are in the same direction. Now on this one, if you look at this one, if it's curved upwards or concave up, we're looking at steep slope up on the top, time equals to zero, steep slope, time equals to greater than zero, the slope begins to decrease, steep slope, relatively flat slope at the very end of this graph. There's a low speed, very low speed down here. So since this is an overall negative slope, we know that the velocity is negative. And because the velocity is negative, um, we know it's moving towards the point of origin from some position away from the point of origin, someplace positive of the point of origin. And because it's going slower and slower and slower, the acceleration is going to be positive. Negative slope, negative velocity, fast to slow. So we have an opposing direction of velocity and acceleration. If the velocity is negative and it's going slower and slower and slower, the acceleration must be positive. You remember that question that I asked you last week about could there ever be a type of motion uh, of a moving object that will slow down and eventually to a stop if the acceleration is positive. This is the graph to demonstrate that. Okay. All right. So over here, this graph here shows us a situation in which we're looking at a position time graph where the object actually changes directions. So we got a car moving uh, starting from the point of origin and it's moving at a constant speed. It's moving up, it's moving up, it's moving, moving, moving 30 meters away from the point of origin in the positive direction and then it stops there for about three seconds. Now why is it stopping? Earlier I'd asked you a question, what does the horizontal line mean on a, on a graph? It basically means the car is not moving for a period of time because its position remained at, in this case, 30 meters for a while, for three seconds and then it begins to move backwards. Well, I say backwards, but really it's backtracking or moving in a negative direction. So it's moving towards the point of origin where it started. And it's moving much more rapidly because the slope is steeper. So it's moving pretty fast. So it has a negative velocity, but at this point it reaches the point of origin. And it begins to move away from the point of origin. So where can you tell me that the object has changed directions? Okay, so if you said this area, you're wrong. It didn't change direction. It simply just moved and stopped. And then at this point, if you had said this point as the changing in direction, you were correct because it is first moving in a positive direction. And at this point, that's when the slope changed to a negative direction. If you had said this area as a change in direction, you're wrong because this is just the point in which it passes the point of origin. So if I wanted to make the story out of this, uh, basically, uh, I am walking, my house is, say, a block away from school. Okay, I walk for a little while, and I realize, and I stop, and I realize I forgot something from home. So then I stop and I ponder what I forgot from home, and at this point, I, just, I remember, oh yeah, I forgot my lunch at home. So I run back home. But, but then the thing is, when I got to my front of my house, it turns out that my younger brother has my lunch and he's walking the opposite direction away from me so I have to run past my house towards him. So, a little story there. Okay, so um, I'm going to uh, conclude this first part of the motion graphs for the position time graphs and then for the next one it's going to be the velocity time graph dealing with the acceleration. So, uh, go ahead and rewatch it. Go ahead and remember write down those couple of questions that I, you had asked me, or what I'm asked you. So you know, go ahead and try to answer those, and then uh, ask me in class. We'll be working on this on Wednesday and on Thursday. Friday is a quiz. All right, short week this week.